Hey, Arlian. Don't look like that. What do you got there? Hi. Um, got the screen for the pregnancy test. Yeah, that sees what I see. Yeah. Do you see what I see? <laughs> yeah. So this is um, this is a uh, rocket chip here, Bluetooth to that, and what we're going to be doing is preg testing these ladies here. Right here, Kyla. So that's a snake. A gal named Temple Grandin. You heard of Temple Grandin? Have you seen the movie? Yeah. She was one of my professors in uni. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. So she designed all these snakes. And uh, this is a tub. And then they feed into the race, the curved race. And up to the silencer hydraulic crush. They are the best in crushes. Yes. Made in Kansas, down the road from where my grandparents lived. So I used to go there as a kid. And little did I know that I was that close to the best crushes in the world. They are bomb diggity. Hi, Sarah. Yeah. Evie, yeah, digging it, digging it, digging it. There's Super Nick. There's the, uh, there's the tub mixer going. Feeding these ladies a lovely ration. Look how happy they are. Happy cows doing their thing. Turning um, low value cellulose and stuff into beautiful, delicious beef. Yes, nice. Saving the planet one cow at a time. Okay, yep. so this here is my old sound. Do you want to take this? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to run it, Evie? Oh, no. There you go. Okay. <laughs> right on. So um, this is an ultrasound. Most of your ultrasounds are linear, so that means they've got like a, a flat interface, like what you see at the hospital, and it's got a whole bunch of little piezo crystals in them, and they, they vibrate and create a high, uh, high, uh, high frequency sound, which then goes through and it echoes through different, you know how when an echo, when there's air and then there's a solid wall, there's an echo? Well, ultrasounds do the same thing when it goes from like liquid to solid tissue. But this is a sector scanner, so you can see how that's spinning around and around, like a record player, right, right, round, round. Yep. So that's how it works, and it shoots an image like this. So if you look at Evie's little image here, you can see that is the head of the ultrasound. Hi. So when the cows come in, I'm going to sneak this up their top hole so that we can look down over the uterus, which is neat. So their rectum's up there, their bulb is there, there's a vagina in there, oh, I have a big vagina, cervix, and then the uterus with the pregnancy. And so we're going to be just going in through the rectum trying to get good contact with the floor of the rectum and look at these little babies that are in there. Now these were AI'd 90 days ago and the bulls were put in 10 days later. Cows cycle every 21 days, right, team? Uh -huh. On average, so they're mostly gonna be either 90 days pregnant, 70 days pregnant, or 50 days pregnant. So we're gonna call them AI, first round, second round, pull back up. And they've been made it to Wagyu. Do you Wagyu? I will you. So it's gonna be pretty rad. Yep. So, um, but what we can do here is so that people can see what I see, is if you want, Evie, when we're starting to get going, is you can hold that camera up and just show the show people what I'm seeing through my little monocle here, my little Darth Vader hat. <laughs> Look like a Ghostbuster. Bam, bam. That's what. Pregnant AI. AI, little up there. Yeah. See how big that is, guys? So that's a 90-day pregnancy. Can you see the little circle down in the lower left hand corner? That big circle is 90 days, the little circle is 60 days, so the diameter of that is AI. Yeah, that's uh, round two bulls. So these were AI 90 days ago. They would have cycled roughly 70 days ago or 50 days ago, so that's like a little 50 day pregnancy. He's about that big. Hi, Sarah. Yep, so we're here doing some genetic testing. So we take a sample from the ear, just in our little nifty gun. A little bit from the females so that we can do genetic identification in terms of who the mum is and who the dad is because we're not there when they drop their calves, so it's very hard to know. So she's definitely pregnant. Yep. Come in. Yep. 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 Y
the ultrasounds are probably more specific rather than sensitive. Yeah. So the ultrasound does miss some pregnancies, which is why I stick my hand in all the empties. Yeah. Every now and again you go, oh geez, the ultrasound missed it. But if the ultrasound sees the pregnancy, uh -huh. it's definitely pregnant. So that's called specificity, so yeah. highly specific. Sensitivity is probably a little bit less than a skilled person by arm. Yeah. So I've done about, I'm trying to get to a million before I die, so I'm getting closer. <laughs> We've probably done somewhere around 700,000 so Ooh, far, which is pretty rad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is, if so, if you find one that is like, Say AI, so 90 days. Yeah, yeah, on this one was 90 days. Yeah, yeah. 90, 93 or 4, I think. Because today's 20th, it was the 18th. So it was 91 plus 2, 93 days, yeah. Yeah, so say <coughs> say you found it, the fetus was dead. Yeah. Do you yeah. have to surgically remove it? Or do you have no, to... they generally either resorb it or expel it. Occasionally yeah. they mummify it. The mummy. You know, Brandon Fraser, the mummy? It's, <laughs> it's not quite like that. But yeah, yeah they just swallow it off, suck out all the goodies, and it's just a little mummified, shriveled up, dried up cat. It stays in there and if that's the case they don't get back in calf yeah so yeah it's a bummer so when i'm when i'm generally preg testing for a producer and there's a dead fetus inside we just say oh look she just goes with the empties yeah and so she and down at the plant they'll uh the or the ears will just come out in one big schlop and uh and the rest of everything so it's pretty good at walling it off and holding everything in the uterus yeah it's kind of like a lovely bag to hold all the bad garbage in <laughs> but oftentimes they spit them out or or resorb them depending on how far along they are so 30 days, they're starting to get a little bit bony. So they're, it's kind of a six, one half dozen another. Less than that, they, they can just liquefy them and yeah. resorb them. The uterus is an amazing place. We all spent time there. It was cool. <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember? <laughs> Question. Oh, I don't. I'm not really put, sure. Put you on the spot. Uh, Come on, Sarah. You can think. What do you got there? I was getting more excited about how many pregnancies we've got. Yeah, DNA samples. There's 96 well plates. That's 95 in calf out of 100. 114, Nick. Thanks. Nick, you got a question. What's your question? Um, 87% sure. an okay result for heifers in a feedlot environment. I think so, yeah. One round of AI, two rounds of backup. So it was a seven week mating. If you were doing that naturally mating, seven weeks, that'd be a shit hot. Sorry, a really good, not shit hot. Sorry about the profanity. Um, result for uh, seven weeks. And what do you got here? Oh, I was just, just got out. Yep, and there's our uh, there's our list of all the TSU devices for genomics. So we're doing those. Why are we doing the genomics, Super Sarah? Um, we're we're doing the genomics so that we can identify the calf and which bullet was by. And, and the mum, yeah. yeah. So the when mom. the calves are born, we can know we'll know who the daddy is. I'm your daddy. No, uh, not in this case. Um, and then compare it to yep. Uh, compare it with the uh, who the mother is. So if we got some some calves that are doing poorly, we can we can potentially rule out that sire or rule out that dam. Pretty rad. Any other questions? Great job. Thanks for pushing up the cows. Yeah. Good night. Yeah.